All right. Hello, everyone. So uh, last time uh, we saw the logic behind separable equations. You know, we separate um, two variables and then we integrate the both sides. Okay. So we uh, we also saw the general rules uh, for uh, solving separable differential equations, and we did a few problems. Um, we did a, a few fairly uh, fairly involved problems. Where where are they? okay? So yeah, these ones. Okay. Uh, today, what what I want to do is you know practice some more, practice some more, um, some some more examples. So let's see. The first one I have here is this problem. So, and uh, another focus of you know this this video is just to cover some small gaps or you know some some di differences or kind of variations in notation or other stuff that you might see in you know books or lectures. Okay, stuff like that. So one thing you can see here. Is this is often how uh, you know a, a first order differential equation is written? So you know instead of dy by dx, they are actually already separated. Okay, they are actually already separated. So they're written sometimes written like that. And actually, if if it's like this, then it's even better for us. You know, if if it's a separable equation, uh, if it's going to be, and if it's already you know dy and dx are separated like this, it's pretty it's pretty good for us because. You know, just by eyeballing this, you can tell whether this is separable or not. Okay. So, and you know, as you can see, if we just take, you know, this, this part, this part uh, to the other side, this would in fact, you know, be separable. Okay. So let's, let's do just that. So let's see. And oh yeah, another thing, you know, we have an initial condition. The curve passes through zero comma one. That's just, you know, another way to say, uh, you know, you know, y of zero, y when x, when x equals zero, y equals one. Anyways. So first thing, what we should do is, you know, uh, take this to the other side. Let's see. So e to the power x, e to the power x. Actually, uh, let me write the y's on the left. Okay. So y dy, okay, is gonna equal e to the power x uh, dx, right? So uh, this is definitely, a, you know, separable equation. Uh, the y's and the x's are, on, you know, the opposite sides. So now we can integrate. Now we can integrate. I'll, I'll actually put the sign here. So okay. So if I integrate the left side, what I get is um, y squared over two. What I if I integrate the right side, what I get is this e to the power x, e to the power x plus some constant, right? Plus some constant c. Then then if I multiply by two, then if I multiply by two, what I get is y. Sorry, no, not y. Y squared equals um two e to the power x. Plus again, you know, you could say C prime or D or some, some other letter, but, uh, then again, it's just some arbitrary constant. So just writing C is, is fair enough. Okay. So we have, we have more or less solved it, but actually we have found the general equation. Okay. So we, have, we found the general solution. Okay. So this is the general one. Now we are given an initial condition and that is, let's say the curve passes, uh, zero comma one. So when X equals zero, Y equals one. So let's plug those numbers in. So, um, when x equals zero, this is what? Uh, two e to the power zero, you know, e to the power zero is just one. So it's just two plus c and, uh, y is equal to one. So one squared is just one. And from here you get, from here you get, um, c equals, uh, negative one. c equals negative one. Now, we just need to plug this in, in, you know, in our general equation, in our general equation. What we get from there, what we get from there is, let's see. Um, y squared, y squared equals 2 e to the power x minus 1. Okay. C is minus 1. Now, um, this is, this is fair enough as a solution, but there are actually some, you know, there's actually some, uh, uh, a really interesting thing, uh, two interesting things actually that are happening here. One is suppose say if, if you wanted the explicit solution, uh, or if you, if you are told to find it, um, you know, normally, if we didn't know any better, you know, we, we do something like this. So y would be equal to, y would be equal to plus or minus square root of 2e to the power x minus 1, right? Because, you know, when, when you take a square root, it's not like you can just exclusively choose one of them, okay? Uh, just because we wanna. So, uh, we'd have to include the plus or minus. But here, there's something interesting happening, okay? Uh, note your initial condition. It says when x equals 0, y equals 1, okay, when x equals 0, uh, y equals 1, and usually the way these things go 
I mean, you you might you might put forward the argument that okay, so if it passes zero comma one, uh, I mean, it it doesn't necessarily say that it doesn't pass zero comma minus one, but usually these do mean that it passes. You know, when x equals zero, it solely passes this point, and especially if they say that it is a function. Okay, especially if if the question says that it's a function, definitely at x equals zero, it's only gonna pass zero comma one. So if that's the case, okay. So you know, I might think, why did I put forward zero comma minus one? The thing is, you know, if if it passes only zero comma one, that means y is positive. When x equals zero, y is positive, and you know, especially if it's a function, the same thing has to be true. You know, you know, the square root. I think you get the idea. It, you know, just but just by the fact that uh, when x equals zero, when x equals zero, y kind of have, y has kind of chosen one instead of minus one. Means that we are taking the positive square root here, right? So, our particular solution. I mean, if we wanted to write it in an explicit form, to actually be, let's see, it's gonna be the positive square root. Okay, the principal or positive square root of two e to the power x minus one. That's one thing. Another thing is, you know, uh, you know, since since we are taking a square root, okay, um, there there's you know a, a fact that. This in whatever is inside here, you know, provided we are, you know, in the uh, scope of real numbers and all, this has to be a positive, uh, actually a non-negative number, right? Okay, so uh, e to the power, sorry, two e to the power x minus one. This thing, okay, this thing needs to be greater than or equal to zero, right? So our our domain is actually limit limited. Our domain is actually limited. So if two e to the power x minus one is greater than or equal to zero. That means e to the power x is greater than or equal to half. Okay, uh, if you take the natural log of both sides, that means x is greater than or equal to natural log of half, or you could write you know negative natural log of two. But anyways, as you can see, uh, a lot of times the solution okay uh, does does actually limit your your domain. Your domain is naturally limited, as you can see. So there's another thing you know. I think. Uh, often these are called, you know, the interval of valid validity, but just domain would do too. So, uh, so these were, you know, uh, the kind of things that I wanted to show you. Uh, let's move on. So we we solved this problem. This was this was basically our this was basically our answer. Well, um, both of these are valid. This too, if if you're you know, if you're not uh, told to write the you know explicit form, that is fine too. Next problem is this one. And yes, one thing. Yes, you you might say okay. So D. Yes, it can definitely be some constant, um, you know, like like in algebra. But to be honest, when you're doing um, differential equations uh, and even differential calculus too, um, and if you see a dy, this certainly doesn't mean d, you know, some constant d multiplied by y. It's 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 the derivative. It's the uh, and specifically here, you know, uh, there's no number here, so there's it's definitely the first derivative. The second derivative would look something like this, okay? And I think you get the idea. A lot of you might have seen this already, but anyways, I just wanted to clear that up. So, uh, this equation, this equation, let's let's see what ha what what's happening here. So, x x sine of x plus you know some expression some expression of y uh, multiplied by the derivative of y with respect to x is equal to zero. So we're gonna we're gonna actually uh, again you know my bad, but I've been neglecting to uh, kind of like go through my steps. Okay, but. Uh, it's it's also a fact that you know uh, once you get the hang of it you don't need to go through you know in, in like stepwise and just remember them and going through them one by one uh, you know just for eyeballing it is enough to at least say that it's a first order equation and to be honest if it weren't uh, you know we wouldn't even try to think about it you know as as solving it in terms of separable equations so that's one thing this is also as you can see a first order equation first order differential equation okay next thing we need to do. Is uh you know we need to have all the dy by dx's okay on one side and everything else dump everything else all the all on the other side. Let's try to do that. So what we get is um one minus six y to the power five um dy by dx. This is gonna equal um negative x sine of x negative x sine of x. All right. So um. It indeed does look, uh, you know, separable, especially if we multiply by dx. That really should be enough. Okay, that uh, that basically is separating the x's and the y's. Let's do that. Let's multiply by dx. So we get 
Um, let's see. Yep. Almost the same thing. So let's see. Uh, we have dy here and negative x sine of x dx here. All right. Now we take the integral of both sides since the variable is separated. Um, so what we get on the left side is, let's see, uh, integral of 1 is y, integral of uh, 6y to the 5, you know, raise the power by 1, then you divide by 6, we get is negative y to the power 6. It's going to equal, uh, okay, so the, the, the right side is a bit involved. Seems like uh, we need to do, we need to use integration by parts. Okay, so let's see, let's um, uh, choose a color. Great. Okay, so uh, for that, uh, let's say that, you know, function I'm going to differentiate, uh, you know, we know L I A T E, Li8. So, you know, uh, trig, trig. Uh, trick comes later, okay, you know, the algebra comes first. So, the function that I'm gonna differentiate is x with the algebraic one. And the one that I'm gonna integrate is negative sine of x. I included the negative here just because, you know, this is gonna become cosine of x. But anyways, um, so what we get here is, you know, I'll, I'll do it on this side. I'll do it on this side. So what we get here is, let's see. Uh, first thing, you know, Integral of sine of negative sine of x cosine of x. So x, you know, so we leave the first function as it is. Um, then this is cosine. Whoops, uh, what happened? Um, this is cosine of x uh, minus. Okay, now we differentiate x. Okay, uh, so that's one, and then you know we just have the cosine of x again and uh, dx. So then the integral of cosine of x is just sine of x. So what we have here is x cosine of x minus sine of x plus c plus c so this is this is what's you know what's on our uh, right side so yeah we, we basically solved it we basically solved it i don't think it can be simplified any more than that so uh, our final answer is y minus y to the power 6 equals x cosine of x minus sine of x plus c plus c so that is our answer um you know we don't have any initial condition here so uh cannot find a particular actual solution okay next one next one so we have this equation we have this equation um let's see e to the x uh, e to the power x minus y okay plus x squared e to the power minus y e uh, minus y prime or derivative with respect to x is equal to zero all right so as i said you know, first thing we are gonna, um, you know, take the y prime or derivative of y respect to x on one side, um, and I'm just taking it to that side, and I'm gonna dump everything else on the other side. So, you know, this 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 side is gonna be uh, e to the x minus y e to the power x minus y plus x squared e to the power minus y. All right. So, um, next thing we we could do is you know, we'll, we'll try to separate it, but it seems like it's, you know, um, it's not like this is a product of functions of x and y, uh, just yet. Okay. It's not that obvious yet, but, um, there, there, there seems like there's some certain simplification we could do because, you know, we have an e to the power minus y here. We have an, uh, x e to the power x minus y. Okay. Um, as we know, uh, we have our exponent rules. Uh, this is basically, you know, uh, something, you know, a to the power b plus c, you know, I'll, I'll actually, um, I know a lot of you don't really need me to write this and might be annoying, but I'll just write this. So a to the power m plus n, basically a to the power m, uh, multiplied by a to the power n. So same thing here, same thing here. Uh, let's see, e to the power x minus y, e to the power x minus y, so e to the power x multiplied by e to the power minus y. Now we can actually factor e to the power minus y, right, from here. You know, uh, so let's do that. Let's do that. So this uh, right side is actually e to the power x. Um, wait, yeah, this was x squared. This was x squared. Okay, plus x squared, plus x squared, and uh, we factor e to the power minus y. And this is basically dy by dx. This is basically dy by dx. Actually, yeah, yeah. Now, now we can actually safely um, and pretty successfully separate the two variables, right? We can uh, separate them. 
So uh, multiply by dx and also multiply by e to the power y. Okay. Uh, so what we get here is e to the power y dy equals. Um, I'll, I'll write the x squared first, just just because. Yeah, x squared plus e to the power x um, dx. Okay, dx. Now we just okay. Now we just integrate both sides. Okay, put the side there. Now. Um, the right side, the, oh, sorry, not the right side, the left side is obviously e to the power y. Okay, that's just that. And the right side, okay, x squared, it becomes x cubed over 3, raised the power by 1, divide by that power. Um, and again, you know, e to the power x, if you take the integral of that, uh, as we all know, it's just e to the power x, plus some constant, plus some constant. So now, this is our solution. And, uh, you know, even, you know, it's, it's not like, you know, uh, expressing this explicitly is that difficult. This one is actually on the much easier side. You just, you know, if you were told to exp express this uh, explicitly, although, you know, if, if you're not told to, this is fine. This is definitely fine. But if you are told to express this explicitly, it's not really difficult. Just need to take the natural log of both sides. Get y on the left side and the right side, you get, um, the natural log of all of this. The natural log of all of this. Okay. So it's not, it doesn't really look that bad. So this is my solution. This is my solution. Neither one would do. Um, let's see. Yeah. The, this side is gone. The next, the next problems, the next problems. Um, let's see. Where is it? Where is it? Oh, yeah. Here. Okay. So, uh, this is, this is my next problem. Um, y prime minus, uh, 2y squared t equals 18t. So again, we're going to try to, you know, uh, have dy by dx. And again, I, I, I'm probably for, forgetting to mention this every uh, problem, but uh, the first thing we need to see is obviously that uh, the equation is first order. But that's probably something that you can, you know, if you, uh, once you get the hang of it, it really just becomes instinct. You know, to be honest, if it, you know, the way I'm doing this, uh, I, I see the equation and if I see that it's not first order, okay, just by eyeballing it, if I see some higher derivative, Obviously, I'm not going to resort to separable equations in the first place. So, anyways, um, dy by dx, I'll separate that, you know, I'll, I'll uh, isolate that from the other. So, this is an equal, um, let's see, 2 uh, y squared t plus 18t plus 18t. Now, we can actually factor this a bit. We can factor, let's see, um, 2t from here, 2t from this, from this expression. So, you get 2t, um, y squared, plus 9, y squared plus 9. All right. Um, yeah. Okay. Oh, oh, yeah. I, uh, yeah, I, I forgot. I forgot that. Yeah. This was, this was by instinct. But again, yeah, this is another thing that I wanted to show. Thing is, um, it's not, again, not necessary that x is your independent variable or even y is your independent variable. Here, definitely y is. Okay. But as you can see, the independent one, the independent, this, this is definitely the de dependent one because, you know, this one is the de one we're taking the derivative of, but, uh, the independent one here isn't x. Okay. So this is going to be t. That's why here I made a mistake. This is going to be dy over dt, the derivative with respect to t. So anyways, that's just that. Uh, you know, the most, the one, the one thing I wanted to tell you is y prime doesn't always mean dy by dx. Okay. So, uh, moving on. Uh, now we're going to separate the variables. Uh, so we'll, let's divide both sides by this thing. Okay. So y, you know, the y terms come to this side and also multiply by dt. So we get, um, one by, well, I'll actually keep some space here. One by y squared plus nine dy equals two t dt. All right. Now just take the integral of both sides. We just do that. So yeah, here, here. Okay. What do we get here? Um, on, on the left side, okay, now this is, you know, this is, this is a standard integral and, um, whether you do this by remembering the formula or, you know, you could, uh, do this by, uh, looking at, a uh, table of integrals, uh, what you have is, you know, uh, at least in a standard table, this, you should have something like this, the integral of, uh, one over x squared plus a squared dx, um, being equal to one over a, uh, arc tan or tangent of in, tangent inverse, um, wait, one over a arc tan of x over a, x over a. So this is, this is my formula. And I'm just going to plug that in here. So 
uh, for you know for this integral obviously we are you know you, you know, y is our variable another thing you know nine is it's basically three squared so the a inner form formula is three right the a inner formula is three so uh this this side becomes let's see one over three one over three arc tan of arc tan of uh, y over three y over three and this is gonna equal uh whoops uh, integral of two t with respect to dt is uh t squared t squared and plus some constant plus some constant c now uh you know this much actually we can still simplify this a bit you know you could multiply by three on both sides you could multi multiply on uh, by three on both sides what you get is um arc tan of arc tan of y by three uh y by three equals three t squared plus again you know three multiplied by c again it's just some constant so we can just leave it as c okay so this is enough as a solution uh, if, if you're not told to you know write it explicitly uh, you know, this is a uh, uh, correct in you know implicit form, but again, you know we could actually express this ex explicitly. It's not that difficult. Uh, just take the tangent of both sides. Okay, so the arc tan disappears here, and also you know we'll get y by three on the left side, uh, and you know tangent of something on the right side. Let's also multiply by three, so we just get you know the expression for y. It's going to equal three tangent of whatever is here. Okay, three tangent of uh 3t squared 3t squared plus c all right so this is my solution this is my solution um last one last problem uh natural log of dy by dx equals ax plus pure now we see natural log of something that looks like a fraction and the first thing our instincts might uh tell us to use natural you know uh may, you know write it as something like natural log of dy minus natural log of dx now uh, ignoring the fact whether this is correct or not, um, I'm, I'm not a hundred percent sure this is correct, but I, I'm not really sure it's incorrect either. Um, that aside, I don't think that's going to be something productive either. So, uh, what I'm going to try to do is, you know, the same thing we have been doing before. Well, first thing, it, it is in fact a first order, uh, you know, first order differential equation. Second thing, I'm going to again try what I, what I have been doing. You know, it, it doesn't matter whether this, you know, I have a natural log here. I'm still going to try to isolate dy by dx, okay? Actually, it does matter whether na the natural log is here. What I'm saying is, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm still going to bring it to that form where uh, dy by dx is on one side, isolated. Maybe some factor multiplied with it, okay? But certainly not in some sort of function like this. Right? So, to do that, let's take the power of e on both sides, okay? Let's raise both sides to the power of e. Um, no, no, no. Let's, let's uh, take... The, the both sides uh, as powers of e okay that's the correct thing to say so dy by dx dy by dx is gonna be equal to e to the ax plus by and i think you can see where this is going this is kind of like the same thing we did a while ago uh to separate you know the y from the x uh we can use our exponent rule um this is gonna equal ax e to the power ax multiplied by e to the power by now this is very easily separable this is very easily separable uh, all i have to do is divide by e to the power by and multiply by dx so let's do that um if we do that what we get is e to the power negative by on this side and multiplied by dy this is equal to e to the power ax dx all right and now we take the integral of both sides now we take the integral and okay the the left side the left side you know uh we're you know we're in we have we have a constant here so we're going to divide by that constant since this is an exponential integral anyways um this is going to be uh negative one over b negative one over b e to the power negative b y so this is the left side and this is going to equal uh same thing here same thing here we do uh we divide by a e to the power a x plus some constant c, some constant c. So, um, let's, let's actually multiply by, um, negative b. Okay. Let's, whoops, uh, whoops. Uh, let's, let's multiply by negative b. Um, what we get from there is, let's see, e to the power, e to the power negative b y is equal to, is equal to, first thing, uh, you know, um, this is, let's see, negative b by a, negative b by a, um, e to the power ax plus again it's just negative b into some constant c again it's just gonna be some constant 
Okay, now this should be fine, uh, you know, as an uh, implicit solution. If you want to stylize it a bit, you know, you'd uh, multiply by, I guess, A on both sides, then um, I guess bring it to this side, you know, uh, B e to the power AX. So you, you might get something like this. So let's see. Um, a e to the power minus b y plus b e to the power a x um, being equal to some constant c, right? Um, so this is this is one way to write it. In, you know, if you if you wanna uh, express it implicitly, okay. Uh, but if you're told to uh, you know write it ex explicitly, you can even do do that too. Just return to this step, and let's see. Uh, let's take the natural log of both sides and then multiply by negative b. Okay, so what we get from there is y equals negative b multiplied by the natural log of you know all all of all of this. Okay, so that's um let's see. I'll, I'll write the c before. I'll, I'll write the c in front. So c minus uh, b by a e to the power a x e to the power a. So that's that's the explicit form. Okay. Of, of this uh, of this solution uh, all right so this one's done right this one's done I, I don't think there's any more yeah so we are done with all of you know the five problems that i intended to show there's just one more uh you know extra thing that i'd like to show uh this is not something that's um really necessary for you know this topic but one thing you know uh, in the first video i think no i think in the second video second video i showed you um where where is it this equation, right? Um, it's actually a second order equation. So y double prime plus 3y prime equals 0. Um, as you can see, uh, I, I, I did say that this is the general solution. This is the general solution. And we verified that. We certainly did not, uh, you know, solve this equation ourselves. And I, I did say that at that time, we didn't have the tools to solve it. And even now, to be honest, we don't have any general tool to solve a second order differential equation. But this is a special case. And I'll show you why and turns out that we can you know with what we know now actually solve this okay so let's see how so i'll just uh, i'll just write it a bit differently uh you know y prime uh sorry no y double prime is basically uh, d2y d oops um dx squared dx squared and this is plus and we have plus three uh y prime or dy by dx now this is gonna equal zero okay uh, before before going into uh, you know the next step, I, I just like you to think about this a bit. Oops, wait, wait, wait. Why why is there a dy by dy there? The dy by dx. Okay. So I just like I uh, you know like to uh, I, sorry. I'd like you to just think about it a bit. Uh, what do you have here? Okay, basically, what does the equation really contain? Um, you don't see the you don't see any x terms here. Uh, but more importantly. Thing is, y doesn't occur in this equation. Okay, I, you know, it's just dy by dx. Okay, and I just want you to think about this a bit. dy by dx, uh, you know, it's the derivative of you know your dependent variable y. But again, that's just some other function of x, right? Okay, so it should be safe to call that u. Let let's just let's just say that dy by dx is some function u. Okay, so we have some function u. Okay, um, plus. Uh, well, not plus, and you know the other thing here is the other thing here is, uh, in it's it's the second derivative of your uh, you know dependent variable. But then again, you know if you consider this u, it's actually just the derivative of u with respect to x, right? You know this is basically this is basically derivative with respect to x of dy by dx. And as we said, since dy by dx is u, um, this is basically the derivative of u with respect to x. Okay, so um. And yeah, uh, you know, wh why I'm trying to, uh, you know, approach it this way is because we don't see y anywhere. Okay. We just see, uh, you know, some, some function, okay, of x, even though it's a derivative, just some function of x and just its derivative. Okay. The other term is just its derivative. So if we make the substitution, okay, this, this equation actually simplifies. This equation actually simplifies to, um, let's see, du by dx plus 3u equals 0. And I think you see, you know, the incredible thing that's happening here is actually just a first order equation now. Uh, it's in, you know, it's, it's in u and x, okay, but still, important thing, it's a first order equation now. And, you know, I think you can already see that it's also separable, okay? So, that's, that's pretty good news to us. 
it's actually trying to solve this and you know see whether at the end we get something you know uh, valuable or not or uh, worthwhile or not so uh, let's take three u to that side so we'll have negative three u on the right side also multiply by dx okay wait um what i mean is something like this um du uh is equal to negative three u dx well uh you know here you have you know u and then you know, dx we should actually separate them properly so uh, what i'm gonna do is divide by 3u here actually um i think it would be enough to just divide by u uh, so this is gonna equal 1 by u du is gonna equal let's see um, negative 3 negative 3 dx negative 3 dx so now you can take the integral of both sides okay now you can take the integral of both sides um let's see this is on the left side we get a uh, natural log absolute value of u natural log of absolute value of u it's going to equal negative 3x plus some some constant plus some constant okay now now um uh, we'll, we'll take the we'll take the um you know i will take the power of v on both sides so we'll, we get absolute value of u is equal to let's see uh e to the power negative 3x plus c but well what's that you know e to the power um you know something plus something that's basically e to the power minus 3x multiplied by e to the power c right and again e to the power c is just some constant well one thing is it it would be a positive constant because it's e to the power something but still you know it's it's just some constant let's say that it's let's say that is a okay let's say it's a so uh you know e to the power a wait I'll just say it's k for now. <laughs> Anyways, it really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. I, sh I really shouldn't make a fuss about it. Um, uh, it's kind of like a tendency to match it with what we got before. But anyways, um, yeah. So absolute value of u is equal to this. Okay. Uh, well, then what is u? Then what is u? U is equal to plus or minus k plus or minus k e to the power minus three x. But I want I want you to think about it. You know, we have plus or minus k here. Plus or minus some some constant, even you know it it might be positive, but still you know uh, we could get more both positive and negative values. But anyways, um, even without thinking about it this deeply, this is just again some arbitrary constant, right? Plus or minus really doesn't matter. Um, it's just again some arbitrary constant, so we can again you know just call that k so k e to the power minus three x. All right. Now we have u equals this. Uh, then. You know we we know uh we know what u is right we know that u uh, as we substituted it u is equal to dy by dx right dy by dx let's actually put that in here seems like an appropriate place to do it um, we'll have we'll have dy by dx uh, dy by dx equals k e to the power minus 3x and now this is again uh this is this is a uh, pretty interesting this is pretty fascinating this is uh definitely a uh, first order equation it's actually in terms of y and x here and it's also it's also separable right it's also separable so and you know this one in fact you know it's just dy by dx equals something we can just take the anti derivative of both sides what we get is um y equals let's see um integral of in, integral of this side integral of this side um and this is basically going to equal uh first term is you know you divide by negative three you know k divided by minus six but again this is just some constant okay some constant we can call that a okay we can call that a uh, so some constant multiplied by e to the power minus three x plus uh you know we need to add another constant so some constant b and this is this is your solution this is the same solution as you know uh the solution that uh, i was going to say we got but definitely we didn't get this the only thing that we did in uh, the second video is just verify this. That's all that we could do. But here we could actually solve this uh, with uh, using what we already know and plus just a bit of creativity or ingenuity. And to be honest, the main focus of me solving this problem wasn't to show you this method. Okay, um, this method of you know uh, involving you know the fact that uh, your dependent variable is absent in the equation and all that. I'll cover that. Uh, you know, it's it's gonna come. I think much later. But anyways, that's that's actually not my focus here. Not to show the method, not to show that you can actually solve it like this. It's just to tell you one fact that a lot, you know, solving differential equations, it's really a lot about ingenuity. Especially you know when all of these techniques and methods they were born, you know, mathematicians taught you know thought about all these. Um, they they really were quite creative with you know with their thinking. Okay, so 
and you know they 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 were kind of like so uh, you know especially when we do um second order homogeneous linear equations you see so it's like we test solutions and see okay so if, if, if you know is this gonna work so it's basically that kind of my mind frame so we test things and we see you know is is some function suitable that we can plug in here it, it kind of might be the solution okay kind of you know some substitution that we can use here and, and it kind of might simplify you know my uh, ode so it's stuff like that so i uh, you know we should always be on our toes we should always you know you know keep keep thinking a bit creatively um you know because it's it's actually something good when it comes to differential equations not not i i wouldn't say mandatory but it's just something good anyways uh with all that said and done and me blabbering a lot uh that that should be the end of this video i mean uh the, the, the next video is you know gonna be another uh solving technique and you know uh one uh, another reason that i showed you this thing is the next method i also find it you know a uh, quite quite ingenious okay so see in the next video if, if you like this video please do leave a like and subscribe and keep supporting the channel and study smart